Welcome to another episode of Culinary School Stories, the weekly podcast that is dedicated to sharing the stories of people around the globe whose lives have been influenced, impacted, touched, and or enriched, for good or for bad, from their culinary school experience. Hi, my name is Colin Roach and I'm your host. Thanks for joining us today. You are an important part of this show where we ask the question, what's your culinary school story? So now, without any further delay, let's meet today's guest. Okay, a big hello to all the listeners out there, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Culinary School Stories podcast, a proud member of the Food Media Network. My guest today is a graduate of the Restaurant School of Walnut Hill College and has worked in the food service industry for just about 25 years. She lives in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and has a great culinary school story. And with that said, it is my pleasure to introduce today's guest, Keisha Prosser. Keisha, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out to ask, to hear about my story in a coronary arts field. So I'm excited for that. Great. I know we're going to get to it all. I can't wait. But let's start out with our first question. Going all the way back to the beginning, what got you into food? What got you into cooking? Um, to me, it was real simple. It was real simple. Right when I got out of high school, my mom and dad was like, okay, summer's over. What you're going to do? I didn't want to go to college. I was like, no, I'm not. And so I left Philadelphia for two years and I traveled around the world, I traveled, you know, different states. And then when I came back home, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So when I thought about it, I said, you know what? Food service. This is the only career, one of the careers that you can get a job. And then you can leave whatever home you're from, state, city, and you can get a job in like three months. So I was like, you know what? This is it. So from there on, I was in my 20s and I just took off and never changed my career. It's always been in food. I might have, you know, dipped in baking. I might have dipped over here and now I'm teaching. You know, I dipped over here, you know, volunteer, but it was always in food. My hands always been in food. So I'm excited for that. To know that when I leave Philadelphia and I go somewhere else, I can get a job in three months. Yeah, that's true. There's always a, a restaurant job or food service or available for someone to jump into. Now, how did that transition into culinary school? So you found your passion and then what just made you decide to go to culinary school? And what made you pick uh, the school that you did, the restaurant school? Well, my son, as a kindergartner, he won the scholarship that he go to college, his family can go to college too. So he won a full scholarship to college. I won a full scholarship to college and my daughter earned a like partial scholarships to college. So we all, right now my daughter's in college, me and my son, my son have his bachelor's degree in, in Madai that was in Buffalo, New York. I had mine in a restaurant school because I always wanted to go. I even wrote a letter. You have to write a letter to get in. I wrote the letter like three years before I even went there. So it was so funny. It was so it was like I knew I was going. I just didn't know how I was gonna pay for it because it was like a house and a car note. I was like, wait a minute, I don't have a house and a car note to go to college right now. So I I wrote the letter. It it, it, it just it just stayed somewhere in the house. You know how you just shuffle something somewhere. And three years later, my son won a scholarship. It was through Say Yes to Education here in Philadelphia. And I was like, wow, when the time came, I was like, all right, no what school I'm going to. I already wrote my letter. And it was just like, it, and I didn't have to pay for anything. All I had to do was go to school. And that was one, one stress release that was off the table. You know, when you go to school, you try to worry about, you know, how you're going to pay every month, the tuition and stuff. So I didn't have that worry. So I was blessed for that. And I just enjoyed myself at school. Wow. What a program that is. You got to go and your son for free to any school. What, what was the name of it? Is it a Philadelphia or a Pennsylvania type program? Well, no, it's all around the world. It started in, um, it's in Philadelphia. It started in Philadelphia at the um, Belmont chapter in Philadelphia in the eight, in like 89, nine eight in the 80s. And it's from Joyce Wright, Joy, George Rice. And um, he went to University of Penn. And he's a, a, a awesome, a awesome guy. I, you know, I call him, I, you know, I tell my son, I'm like, Hey, that's your godfather. He sent you to college. You know, he paid for everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Hey, that's the guy right there. Yeah. It, it was just so nice. He have, he have a lot of chapters. He had one, he adopted, um, Syracuse. He adopted Ohio. He adopted New York, uh, Connecticut. Mm, 
what other state did he go to? He went to, he went to a lot of other states. Yes, and they they won scholarships. So he's helped a lot of people go further yes. their education. Wow. Yes, Good for him. yes. And they family and, and they families. Wow. Wonderful. Wow. So you already knew you were going to go to the restaurant school. And right. now you found out, wow, what a blessing you got it paid for. Yes. You already had your letter. So you signed up. What was it like your first day? Now you're going, you're excited, you've been dreaming for years to go to the school. Here you are. Tell us, walk us through what's going on. All right. So I was a part-time student because I had you know, I was a mother, so I was a part-time student. So waking up at five in the morning so I can get to class at six in the morning, whew, I tell you, you need to have a good support group behind you when you're going to school, regardless if you are a single mother, if you're just out of high school, you just need a good support group because they can understand. They, they can cry with you. They can help you out. They can help you with your homework. They can eat your projects. So it's like, it's good to have a good support group that's going to be honest with you and supportive. But when I went to school, I was a little nervous, but I wasn't because half of the people was like my age because they was going, a lot of people was going back to change their careers. A lot of people was going back because they was like, oh, this is what I want to do for fun. A lot of people was going back because they just wanted that educational uh, background. I was one that needed that certificate. Like I've been baking for years and cooking for years. And I was like, okay, all right. And then you know, I was like, let me put a name behind my name because that's when people really believe you. Like they just don't believe you when you're just Chef Keisha. But you do like Chef Keisha, I went to the restaurant school. They're like, oh my God, let me taste you blue. I was sitting there like, what's the difference? <laughs> Gives you credibility, right? Right. You know? So I was like, all right, I'll take it. Like, you know, I was like, all right, I'll take it. And I was like, what's the difference? But I, I get with the credibility, but sometimes it's like, I just want to stand on my own demerit, you know, but, you know, people just be like, nah. That's not good enough for them. <laughs> but it it was it was it was nice. So, you know, I had to learn with, you know, you learn how to deal with people, you learn how to deal with every background. And it was it was just fun. Like my youngest teacher was younger than me. And I was like, wait a minute, she's teaching me and she's younger than me. I was like, something's wrong here. So that's another that's where I found my passion in teaching was at the restaurant school. You know, so my teachers, you know, I, I talked to certain ones. I was like, what, give me, I'm, I'm teaching kids now. Like, what should I do? And they was like, just keep them busy. Whatever you do, just keep them busy. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so these teachers were the inspiration for you to go into teaching. You're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Right. Yeah. And plus it was easy. They wasn't sweating. You know, they knew the problems. One of my teachers said, absorb him like a sponge. And I was like, oh, that was like the best analogies I ever had for for, for school, for anything, for life. And I ended up having to tell my son and daughter, my daughter was like, I liked it. I was like, yes, yeah. so ask the questions. Find out why. The biggest thing with people is we don't give them why things is happening. So people don't be like, you know, a lot of people don't like to be told what to do. So be like, go over there and, and clean these dishes for me. You're like, why am I cleaning the dishes? Yeah. Well, if you clean the dishes now, later on, you don't have to do them. Or if you clean the dishes now, we're going to have something to eat on. And it changed it changed people's attitudes. It changed people's spirits when you give them that why. So one of my teachers was like, make sure you always have a why. Make sure you always know what's going on. Why is the bread, why the bread didn't, didn't rise right? A couple of reasons why the bread didn't rise right. Killed the yeast over 150, I mean, over 140. You killed the yeast. You killed, what else you did? You didn't use the right bread. You didn't use the right flour. You put too much salt. You put too much sugar. Like, you know, there's so many reasons why you killed the, you killed the bread. And when people understand that, what happened? They 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 do right. Like one thing I love to do, I make cookies for kids. Kids love. Oh my god, my students love to make cookies. And I know when they do something wrong, and they be like, "Dad, how you know that?" I was like, <laughs> I, was <laughs> I like, learned it. <laughs> I was like, "You ain't put enough butter. You put okay. Everything is white. You know, sugar is white, flour is white, baking soda is white, salt is white. You put what are these? You put too much in, or you thought something was something else because you wasn't reading." So, you know, that's, that's the joy. That's, you know, that, that will be always my tip. Now the restaurant school, was that two year program or was it a certificate? Was it an associate bachelor's? Um, I got associates. So it was a two year program for me. They do have, um, bachelor's, they do have bachelor's program. I didn't go back for that because I was just like overloaded. I was like, I'm mm -hmm. done. I'm tired. Sure. So I was like, I, I, I take this, <laughs> look, I take this and, and ride with it. Cause I had the experience. I just, like you said, I just needed that name and credit, um, credibility behind my name. So I was good with that. 
Did you find some of the classes then were, you know, really not needed? You were already advanced. You were beyond those classes or you still learn something from them all? Um, I learned something from all. I really wasn't no, um, I hate sitting. I hate, I was, I was hate being in the classroom. I was like, oh, I'm back in the classroom. Can we go back in the kitchen? And we learned everything from the kitchen. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, we had to learn French because, you know, we went to Paris and, um, I, I I learned French and totally forgot right right when they land us back to Philadelphia. Totally forgot French. I was like, it, it, it let me live for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to go on a so you got to go on a trip to France in the program. Yes, for a whole yes for a whole week. Wow, how was how was that? That was it was I cried and the reason why I cried because I was like I don't know when I'm coming back over here. <laughs> so to see. <laughs> So to see the Eiffel Tower right in front of your face was like the, you know, the best thing to see for me. You know, me and my um, girlfriends, we cried. We're still friends on to this day. We cried. We was like, oh, my God, we got to come back. We don't have to rush. Um, I drunk wine. You you would drink. If you don't drink, you would drink 7 o'clock. Well, their time would be 7 o'clock. I think our time would be like uh, 12 in the morning. You would drink wine early in the morning, like you would drink wine. I was like, oh my God. So I, you would, you would eat grapes, you would drink wine, you would eat chocolate. You would just, you know, you would eat all the French richy foods. And when I say, when I came back home from Paris, it took me, and I love chocolate. Oh, I love chocolate. It took me three months to eat chocolate again. It, it took me a while to eat a grape and I did not want to see no wine. Like I would say, it just overlooked. I was like one week, y'all, y'all killed me for one week. <laughs> but it was an awesome experience. We went to the caves. We went to like, it was just, it was just, it was just like, it was a good experience. If I tell people to travel, I travel outside the country just to learn a culture and a history is, it, it, you know, you will come back home with a whole different outlook on life. Yeah. Different perspective. It's, you know, changes everything. Yes. Yes, it will. So tell me about the, tell me about culinary school. Tell me about the classes. What was your favorite class? What was your worst class? What did you like the best? Why? Tell us a little bit about, you know, the day to day when you were in those, in those labs. So we had, we, I, I went to school between two and three times a week. Uh, Saturday was like the major class because we had to be in the morning time and, you know, and it was like an all day, all day process. But I liked the labs, you know, more than me. I, I liked the labs because the labs was fun. Like, you know, we had three kitchens you work out of, you know, you had the, um, the baking side where you mix everything. And then you had like the cooking side where you had to cook some of the pastries. And then in the middle room was like the finish room, the finish room where you finish up all the pastries and send them out because they used to sell the pastries. The patient, whatever the students made, they used to sell. They had like a little cafe. So everyone liked to be around me because I, you know, you got to use your common sense, you know? So I used a lot of my common sense when you was in school, please do not lose common sense long you in school. <laughs> you need it. You need it. You need it. You need it. You need common sense. <laughs> so everybody's like working with me because it was like, Hey, let's do it this way. Long it gets done, you know, Let's do it this way. Make sure you read the recipe eight times before you get started. Make sure you have all your meats and supplies next to you. So when I when I got that class down pat, I used to love it. I was like, come on, all right, I'm ready. And then I used to, and I, I don't know if I should say this because somebody in the restaurant might hear it, but I'm gonna say it because it's old, oh, oh, oh. I used to eat, <laughs> I used to eat chocolate mousse because it was so rich. Oh my god, you know how much chocolate, you know more mm -hmm. chocolate mousse is real good. So early in the morning, I used to take a scoop of chocolate milk, I mean, chocolate mousse, and just eat it every, every Saturday. He was like, what? I said, this is my coffee. And then I was up because I never, I ain't drink coffee back then. And I was up. I was like, all right, I'm ready. Like chocolate was my coffee. And people was looking at me and be like, oh my God, you really eat this every day. I said, girl, I'm surprised I ain't a diabetic. Got hot in, got hot in. I ain't had none of that because I was always like moving around, running around. And it was like, look at you. I was like, girl, it's what I needed. I needed. Gave you your, it gave you your energy, right, right? That right. was your boost. That was my like I got talking about this. It's my coffee. And so I, I love that class. My other class was uh, when the chefs used to cook for us. <laughs> that used to be the favorite, you know, my that was my best class. Because I was like, yes, he cooking for us. And all we had to do was take notes and then eat afterwards. So that was, the, <laughs> that was always good. What was that class? That was like they were doing a demonstration? Well, because I took pastry arts, they gave us, you know, some introduction to culinary classes. Because they tell us, like, you have to cook some of your... Uh, oh. 
your baked goods and stuff. So they showed us, you know, about the temperatures, the different, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the difference. What's that? Cooking methods and baking ma- methods. So they used to break that. They they just gave us that just, to, you know, because mm-hmm. what they say, chefs don't know how to bake and bakers don't know how to cook. And I'd be like, what? what? I mean, it was true. And I was like, what? Like, I know how to do both. What you mean? I'm a mother. I can't, I can't pick and choose. I got to do both. Right. So. Now, did they give you, you did they give you uniforms and a knife kit and the books, everything when you went there? Yes, I had every, yes everything that we had there. We had a nice little uniform. Um, we had to wear a little little tie thing that used to drive me crazy, and um, that's how they could did identify what class you was in by your by your uh, tie. And um, what else? What else do we have? Yeah, nice little hot uniforms. On to this day, you see, I have a different color chef jacket. I own no white chef jacket. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> that was what they gave you in school, right? You're right, done with that. Right. And then even when I go to jobs, because I work at different jobs, they give me a white chef jacket. I'd be like, I'm not wearing that. Off. They were like, well, I was like, I'm a manager. I don't have to wear that. I don't have, do I have to wear that? They was like, but it looks so nice. I said, I know what to do, but I'm not wearing it. <laughs> they get so mad at me. I said, that's what I do for a living. I got a choice now to wear whatever type of clothes I want. I, you know, I get the style. I still wear a chef jacket, but it's different colors. You know, and I was like, y'all, y'all, see, y'all, y'all wasn't with the struggle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I see you with some color on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing white. <laughs> I'll keep it clean. Right. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. So tell me, uh, now that you have some perspective to it, what is it that you wish you knew before you went? Like if someone was going to go to that school now, what's some advice that you would tell them? Like, Hey, you should know this before you get there. Something that you wish you had known. Um, read ahead of time, read, 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 do your research, figure out what you want to do. Because when I, I seen a list of things that's in the full service industry and the list was like endless. It was like food photography. It was like the food bloggers and and, you know, it was just so many opportunities. You don't have to be a chef to be in the food industry world. Like you don't have to have a restaurant and be a big chef to to be known in the food service world. So I would tell people to take a, a photography class. Now, for all this long time, you thought I would know about cameras, camcorders. I, I don't know nothing. I'm learning now because we're in this pandemic. And I'm like, why didn't I learn this when I was in school? Like, this is important. Why don't they have a class like this? Because, mm-hmm. you you know, cause why? what's the first thing they say we eat with? Fries. Right. So why don't we have a photography class if that's the first thing we eat with? You know, so I'm sitting here like, I'm like babbling through my head and my mom looking at me like, what are you, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, no, for mom, I'm just learning. I'm just learning something I think I should have learned when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's just me, you know, teaching, teaching yourself how to write a blog because that's, that's the new thing now and describing the food and making someone want to eat it right then and there. Like learn how to do that. Learn how to just get used to everybody blending attitudes and, and cultures and understanding where they come from, their backgrounds, besides always just uh, getting upset or flaring off because, you know, you're co-mingling with everybody, especially if you're not a person that co-mingle a lot, start learning how to do that before you go to school. So you can feel comfortable so you can get out your, you know, your shell. Um, learn how to share more because everyone don't know everything. And a, piece, and a person that know everything to me, I think they should just share everything. Because it's enough, it's, it's enough, it's enough people in food to go around. So no one can touch what you do. When I do, um, I learn when I do expos, I give away the recipe that I'm demoing and people will be so surprised. And I was like, man, God gave me a million of them. If I give you one, would that hurt me? Right. And everybody was like, you know what, dad, that's the first time somebody ever said that and not scared. I was like, go ahead. It's, it's all right. It's, it, it, it don't hurt me none. You know, and I, and I want everybody don't don't feel scared to share because it's not going to hurt you. Is is this to me? I feel like it's going to hinder you some because just because I gave you a um, a chicken parm recipe, do not mean that both of our chicken parms is going to taste the same. Mm-hmm. You're going to add something. I'm not going to add something. I don't believe in adding this. You believe in adding that. So don't get scared when someone asks you for a recipe or something. Like you know, just throw something in there so they or don't or just don't put this special ingredient in there. And let them figure it out themselves, you know. So stuff like that. So stuff like that. So <laughs> you're giving them the recipe, but not a hundred percent, right? Right. 
right, right. I ain't say spike it, but you know, give them the basic because Leon people don't know the basic. So that's what I really want the school for to find basics. And then with my basics, I could take it to whatever level I want to. So those was, those was like my fun class, my educational class. Like, like I said, my why classes, like anything was a why to it. I, I, I loved it because it was like, oh, I had to learn some classes. I fell right to sleep in them lecture classes, English classes. Those <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? not good. I, I just got off work and you talking like, no, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work. So, yeah, but I know they had to give it to us. Yeah, those classes weren't too exciting to you. But now that you're a teacher and you're looking back from that point of view, how do you think or what did, could they have done to make them more engaging, more active? What could they have done, teachers, to make the students you know, more engaged in it? I think um, more little activities, because after, after the person worked nine to five and then got to come to class and sit down, it's like you you just, your brain, you know, how they say your brain farts. you like, blah, ooh, huh? Like you skipping every other word because you just sat down from a long day of work. So I, I would say like have activities, have fun activities about food. Like nothing boring. Please don't ask me what I'm eating every day because I don't know. I, you know, I used to hate that. I used to hate that assignment. Oh, I used to hate that assignment. I was like, what? I got to, I got to stay focused on what, what I ate. I ate a nine later for school, for breakfast. You know, like, why, why is you asking me? <laughs> you had chocolate mousse, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you're not, no, you're not judging me, you know. So, so, so stuff like that. But, you know, you just got to figure out how you can take what the class is giving you and just use it inside your everyday life or inside your business that you're trying to grow. You know, with me, I, I hate lectures and I still do on to this day. I hate meetings on to this day. So I try when I have to have one, I want to be right at the point. Let's say it. Let's do it. Let's go. Because, you know, after a while, after you say it, you end up starting talking like we're friends. And you'll be like, this, this was not part of the meeting. I got to go. So <laughs> so I learned not to be so long winded because people don't have like now, you know, our attention spans is real short now. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes, we out. So thinking about culinary school, I know it was uh, free for you, but if you had to have paid and all the time and and all the homework and the sacrifices you had to make, was it worth it? I mean, would you do it again? Say if you had to pay, would you recommend it to others? I would. I would do it again because that was one of my dreams and one of my passions that I wanted to go to the restaurant schools. So yes, I would do it again. Um, I would think I might study a little bit more harder. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about like, hey, I know this. Like, I, I think I would study a little bit harder. And another thing I think to me, they should give something that they should give us. Like, you know, they gave us art. It was okay, but it, it could have been more like food art, not art letter, but art classes that they gave me. Books is crazy. I wish I wouldn't have had to pay for none. Of, I mean, if I had to pay for books, I would have been crying oh, yeah. because books was crazy. And um, yeah, I, w I would pay. I would actually pay and, and really, really, really get on my professors nerves they would have known me like, like yes miss prosser please stop you've questions. been a sponge but another class I, right but another class i think they really didn't expand on we had an um, entrepreneur class i didn't i didn't and I, it, it sticks with me a little bit sometimes i didn't like the fact that when we, it was time they talked about business but it was like they didn't really get into it they was like write a business plan and they give you like the format of how to write a business plan it was like oh you got to get insurance well, what type of insurance you have to get your license. Well, what type of license? Like, I think they didn't really uh, cover that good enough because then it's like, I got to go to a business school to get all the information that I, to me, I think I should have got at the coronary school because how much money I paid for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that was just, that was some things that I noticed after I got out. People, I was like, how I start a business? Y'all did not really give me a tool to start a business. Y'all were just like, oh, you know, you could be a top chef. And I'm like, okay, well, what? <laughs> You know, so that was just me. I don't, I don't know everybody else's experience, how they looked at that class, you know. It was more of an introduction. They didn't really get into the depth of it. You know, maybe that was fourth year or something. Yeah, yeah. Good. What is one common myth about culinary school or about the industry or working in a kitchen, being a chef that you want to debunk, that people believe, but you're like, no, no, that's not true. And I want to clarify it. What is one of those myths? Oh, when you get out of culinary school, you're going to be a top chef. Or when you get out of culinary school, you're going to have this big, big million dollar business. Or when you get out of culinary school, 
<laughs> I'm hitting them. You laughing. I see your head went up. You're like, oh, yes, they do. <laughs> That's one of the favorites by a lot of guests on this show. They're like, you're not going to be Emerald the guys. You're not going to be on the Food Network. You're not going to be a celebrity chef right out of culinary school. You're not going to be a chef, period, out of culinary school. Right. Don't be big headed. Like it's, 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 it's endless. <laughs> so it's endless, but you know, and, and, and you're not going to be clean, put it that way. So don't be. Don't be. <laughs> Do you get a lot of people coming up to you when you have your chef coat on asking you questions? Like, you know, what's your rest, favorite recipe or how is it to be a chef or I want to be a chef? Or... Oh, yes. Yes, I do. So I learned. <laughs> not to add it so when I'm in a supermarket. Because one time, this is a true story. One time I'm in the supermarket and I'm, I, I teach at the free library. So I'm, I'm crunched for time. Like my, my, my students had everything already set up. Oh, they was waiting for just me. So I'm, I'm like, what are we going to make today? Oh my God, what can we make? Let, let me just grab chicken. Let me just grab some sauces. And then somebody was like, oh, oh, I see that you're a chef. And I was like, what do I got? Just drinking away. <laughs> like, this is not the time. I'm like, I'm like, yes, how can I help you? Like, and I had to realize, like, just just always be nice because you don't know who got the camera on. You know, it's yeah. just, you know, the days, the day is about the camera. And I'm like, yes. And I was like, he was like, am I bothering? And I was like, a little, yes, I'm late for class. I gotta teach the class. And I'm like, listen, just come, just come to the library and I will answer any questions you got to answer. So he was like, what you think I should have for dinner? I had such and such last night. I had this last night. And I'm looking at him like, no, this is not yep. the time. This is not the time. I tell my students that, I tell them, my, that jacket has power. If you don't believe me, just put it on and go stand at the meat counter at the grocery store. You'll get people, oh, is this a good cut God. of meat? How do I cook that? They don't even know that it's your first day in culinary school. You put the jacket on, you are a chef. <laughs> oh, and I used to, I used to tell, um, so I worked at Whole Foods. And I was in the meat department and you're right. Cause I had to help out in the meat department. So I'm sitting here like, all right, y'all, I don't really do this, this, this meat thing. So tell me what I need to do. But I was good with talking with customers. So they noticed that they was like, Oh, you good with talking with customers. I said, listen, the golden rule, three fifty, a <laughs> <laughs> little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, 20 minutes. That's the golden <laughs> rule. They was like, don't you do that to people. <laughs> it works. Am I right? But am I right, sure? Yeah. They was like, how you just, I said, listen, they don't know. So what's the use? Right. So, look, they was like, I said, and there's no your term and temperatures is one. You know, I said, just learn these temperatures right here because you got your meat right here. I said, so put temperatures right here so you know the temperature. So when somebody asks you a temperature of pork, you can be like 155. You could, you know, and they go swear you know something. Yeah. But you you just gotta play along. You gotta play along. You put, gotta have that confidence. Yes. They was like, you was not right. And I was like, hey, listen, you gotta listen. Another another situation that I always find myself is if I'm on an airplane and someone says, So what do you do? I'm always like, oh, no, I don't want to say. If you say, oh, I'm a chef, oh, my God. They'll be like, oh, I always wanted to be one. What's your favorite recipe? And there's the door is open. So now I'm like, uh, I'm a teacher or uh, I'm in education. <laughs> don't have to tell that chef word. Yes, that's, that's what I say. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's so funny. Because now that I teach cooking classes, people are like, I don't already know how to cook. So my mom, she's always next to me. She was like, it's not, it's, she's really not. She, she teach more than just cooking. It's like, you know, she teach about sanitation. She teach about temperatures. She teach about you stop eating all that sugar and just reduce it. She was like, just because it's healthy, you don't have to put your face up to it. And I be cracking up. And I, so when they take the class, they be like, oh, my God, I learned so much. I can't believe that you do all this. That's all. I mean, and I was just looking at people like, oh, God, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, yes, y'all. Sometimes you got to take something for the experience and have fun. It's not all about, um, you know, like I'm not disrespecting grandma and auntie and mommy. We, you know, we got to educate each other. So, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny. Yes, wearing a chef jacket <laughs> is hilarious. <laughs> and my neighbors, they love it. When I walk out the door, oh, my neighbor eyes, they lit up. They be like, what we making today? What we sampling today? And I be looking at them like, are oh, y'all really serious? Like they, because they know my kids don't eat because my kids, they work and they, you know, kids, they run around and everything. And, and they're in their 20s. So 20 year olds, they eat what they want to eat. And my neighbors be like, I saw you go live. Where's it at? 
you know, I made breakfast piece that my neighbor wrote, here I come. And I'm like, what is, what, what, like on the live? I'm like, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> It'll be like that. So yeah, she love it. My, you know, so like I said, this, this jacket do get you in yep, trouble. Yep. Opens doors, but it also can get you in trouble. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now you're out of culinary school and you've had lots of different jobs. You talked about, you know, working for uh, Whole Foods Market and other ones. But now you have two kind of jobs that I'd like you to tell us about if you can, which is uh, you're the food service manager for a school district. And also you have the mobile cooking teacher. So if you could tell us about those two and, um, you know, wh where you're at, where they're going and um, a little bit of explanation on those. So um, right now I would uh, work with a charter school and um, I am the food service manager there. It, it's nice. You know, I was I was excited because I just started in January and then two, you know, three months later, here we go with the pandemic. I'm like, oh, great. This 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 is like, wow. So now when we go back to work, everything is totally different. Yeah. So I'm, I, you know, every day I pray about that because it's like, OK, how can we stay safe? Job is to make sure everybody stays safe. So I've been, you know, reading up on that, how we can keep everything, not go back to normal, but have a new norm. Mm hmm. So that, that's that's one of my challenging challenging for for the school. We I serve uh, twelve hundred kids every day, breakfast and lunch. Wow! You know, from K to eight, from K to twelve. So it's it's a nice big school here in Philadelphia. So I, I'm excited about that. Um, and then after I finish that, from six to two, six to three, I teach cooking classes. Wow! <laughs> right, like so I go right on into like. I'm back in my my teaching mode, and I started that company in 2015. The reason how I got started with Mo Reason Keys Mobile Cooking Teacher was the man Joyce Rice that gave me the scholarship. He, you know, he he voluntarily gave me his money, so it was like, how can I give back to the community? You know, because he gave back to the community. How can I give back to the community? So we had a camp every summer called Freedom School. So I was like, hey, whatever I learn in school, let me teach the, the students how to cook. So they was like, oh, you know, we're going to have a cooking class. I was like, yes, we're going to have a cooking and baking class. So I made up a little, little agenda. That's when I really was talking to my teachers was like, what I need to do? Like, what did I just put myself up into? So, so my class was always ranked number one because everyone, they, we, we had no kitchen. So I had to create a kitchen. So we had portable, like portable everything. Our refrigerator was a cooler. I had a cooler and I had ice in it. I had a gallon of water and I used to freeze the gallon of water over nighttime. So it was a gallon of water was to keep it a food cold. Like, you know, the, all the parents was food cold. So when it was time for cooking classes at one o'clock, the water by then had like defrost. And guess what? That's when we drunk our, that's when we made juice and stuff like that from that water, from the jugs. It was like, y'all. <laughs> Resourceful. When I say I had to learn how to take it from scratch to, to so I, I learned so much from just being portable. So that's what a mobile cooking teacher come from. Like, you can give me a, a blank straight and we're going to make it happen. We're we, we going to put it together. So that's how I started that. And the students loved it. Cookies was, they always wanted to make cookies. So I had to learn how to make cookies into a math project. And when I did that as a math project, I showed them like two sticks is what? One cup. How many sticks is in, how many tablespoons is in a stick? How many, you know, so they have, didn't know this. A lot of students thought sugar and salt, I mean, sugar and flour, it looked like, but they didn't know, like, don't mix it together. No, you can't dump everything that. So I taught them what I learned, I taught them. And on to this day, when I see certain students, they was like, oh my God, Miss Keisha, I miss you. Thank you for teaching me this. I'm cooking now. I have uh, three students that went to coronary school. One of them went to JNA, one of them went to the Art Institute, one of them did go to the restaurant school. I could say two out of the three did graduate. Um, all three is still working in a food service industry. So I'm happy to see that. And then I see a lot of mothers that they're mothers now. And they was like, you know, I'm cooking for my sons and daughters. Oh my, they loving it all because of you. And it, it just brings a joy to my heart when I see that. I feel like, oh, okay, I'm doing something right. <laughs> So that's that. Now I do it. Well, before the pandemic, I was in daycares and the preschool uh, students, they loved it. They actually knew how to make homemade chocolate chip cookies. They memorized the recipe. So I, we were so surprised. I was like, wow, y'all not even in pre-K yet. 
like, you know, y'all ready to go to pre-K or kindergarten next year. And you remember, you know, how to do it. I never work with electric um, blenders. We always use a wooden spoon because I told them every ancestors had to use a wooden spoon to make some good pastries. Yeah. So we did. So, so, you know, so they, they felt connected. I said, so your grandmothers did this, your great grandmoms did that. And I would you not know, make them go home and ask their parents questions. So when I did see the parents, I'm like, do go Miss Keisha, my do go Miss Keisha. And she was like, that's all she talk about is you. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, I'm happy I'm doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> you're influencing them. You're affecting them. Yeah. So I was happy for that. And then I was in North Light Community Center. That was in the Mania section in Philadelphia. And it was a community center and I, I taught there. So I taught more of my adult classes there and adults was happy and satisfied and they were surprised. I had people coming from Reading. Somebody came from Lancaster to take my class. I was like, wow, y'all traveling for me? I was like, I, I actually started crying. I was like, I don't know if I would have came from Reading to come see me. That's like an hour and something drive. But, you know, so I had to make sure I made that class worthwhile. So it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's exciting. I, I feel like I'm not where I want to be yet. And the pandemic stopped some of my goals because I always wanted to go to Vegas and teach a big cooking class in Vegas. But now it's like, all right, now how can I do this? <laughs> how can I do this with this pandemic? Pandemic, y'all messed me up. Y'all messing up my goals. I got to reset my goals again. <laughs> so that's it. My goal is really teach communities how to cook something healthy and safe. And now that we have this pandemic, there's a lot of share programs going around. It's giving out free food. Mm-hmm. I do a demo every day showing parents how to cook with the free food that they gave us. Uh, yesterday was so Saturday I was with um, Queen Memorial Library that's where I teach my cooking classes at um we did a sesame chicken I used everything up that the share gave me they gave us grilled chicken in a bag so the grilled chicken was the sesame I put the uh, sauce over it and I made the sauce separate because I know a lot of people's vegan now so I showed them like and told them why here here, here that why part I told them why (laughs) you make the uh, sauce separate from everything else because if you had vegans yeah, vegan people can enjoy the food too because we had broccoli, we had peppers, we had onions, I had rice or I had noodles. So it was a society. And someone rec- someone noticed that. They was like, thank you for giving us the vegan option. And I was like, look at that there. Always got to remember the vegan people. So yes. Now you teach a lot of uh, the, uh, healthy aspects, right? So you're also not only teaching cooking, but how they can change their diets and their health through food. Yes, yes. So that's the fun part because I tell them, I said, listen, we we can, there's two things that we need to do. We need to lower our sugar. We need to lower our salt intake. So I told them, besides them buying the uh, package of seasoning, go home and make your own seasonings. Because nine out of 10, you have all the ingredients inside your home in your pantry to make the ingredients. So I show them how to make a jerk rub. I show them how to make a taco rub. I show them how to make a, a fajita rub, a rotisserie, roast, um, rotisserie chicken rub, and when I and a barbecue rub. And when I saw them, they was like, oh yeah, I do have all these seasons in my house. I was trying to get rid of these seasons. I didn't know what to get rid of, like how to get rid of them. You, you notice that like you, you, my mom house is, and my mom is an example. She got so much season. I'd be like, mom, really? You don't even cook no more. So I actually go to her, when I run out of time, I go to her house. And I clean her out and she gets so mad because then when she wanted to use it, she'd be like, Where, where's that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, I took that season. <laughs> 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 but I'll be like, I, you know, I'll be like, Ma, you got you to gotta rotate your seasons. Let, let me, give me, give me that, give me that, give me that, give me that. And she's like, you're going to pay for my seasons? I'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so, it, and, and they love it. So I did a senior class and we did the spice kit. And they loved it. The seniors, they made their own spice because they put them in a bag and everyone took home like one fourth cup of spices. They was like, oh, this is a lot. I don't know. I was like, yes. Yeah. So then when I did my senior class again, they was like, well, can we do the spice kits again? We loved it. You know, can, you know th- that did make sense. And I was like, yes, because you can, you know, what's the use of always looking for? Because when you're seniors, what's happening? You can't do the salt no more or the sugar no more. What's the use to keep on reading labels when you can just go home and make your own spice? So you don't have to worry about reading it because you already know you ain't going to put salt in it. Right. Perfect. I'm trying to make it easy for people. Now, if someone wants to find out more about what you're doing and how would they do that? Is there a way to contact you? Is, do you have a website? Is there a way that they can get more information, get involved? Yes. Yeah, so my website is www.keys.com. 
thefactsfacts.com. You can get in contact with me there. Or I love this word right here. You can Google me, mobile cooking teacher. <laughs> Great. Well, I, I love that part. I love that. I'll be sure to put the link in the show notes anyway. So if someone is driving or something right now, can't write it down, don't worry about it. You can go back to it and look it up and they'll have a direct link to those sites. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on Facebook as um, mobile cooking teacher and kids can cook PA workshop. The same thing on Instagram, mobile cooking teacher and kids can cook PA workshop on Instagram. I'm there every day until September. When I go back to work, I'm going to have to change all my times around. But until September the 1st, I'll be on Instagram every day at six o'clock on Facebook every day at three o'clock. And I'm trying to work with my YouTube channel because I was like, oh, something else we got to work with. Oh, and we, yeah. And we should have. Um, oh, in carnival school, they need to take up um, what filming filming now because everything is now about filming. You got to film this. I film that. <laughs> it's always something to add. Yeah. Every generation is like something new to add. Drop something and add something. So that's it. That's how you can get in contact with me. So what's next for you? What's next for Chef Keisha? Where is where do you see yourself next year, five years? Where, what's your big plan? Oh, yes. I've been writing goals down too. So I'm excited for that. And my goals for my business is, I, I truthfully, I did not want a building. I didn't. Only because I'm already in the building to go inside of another building. I was like, no, that was, that was too many walls. That was too many walls to worry about. But now I noticed that I need a building. So I'm looking for a storefront. I hope by next year or when I, before I turn, before I turn a certain number, I ain't going to say my number. <laughs> 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 I have my storefront. Um, another thing, someone want me to invest in, into a food truck. I told them I'm really not into that, but you know, I was like, all right, I, I humor you. And another thing is I wanted to, um, I wanted to have like, um, and this is me giving back to the community again, we're helping other chefs that's coming in to have an incubator kitchen where they can come and, and cook this up. It's not a lot here in Philly and it's real hard to get inside that community because it's so expensive. And a lot of people just don't have the money, but still want to give out good food and safe food. So my goal is to, to see how I can invest in the incubator kitchen where I can have people come and, you know, that, that mean, I mean, I could stop working so hard and I could still do my cooking classes there. Like, so it's going to be like a multi, multi use to kitchen. So that's one of my goals that I would love to have for, on my project. I'm going to start, I'm gonna start researching that now, where is a good location where people don't mind coming, make sure it's parking, you know, all the, all the good perks when you start charging people, because that's what they be asking for. Yeah. So yes, so that's my goal to have an incubator kitchen. So that's less work for me. So I can really sit back and, you know, be like, okay. You're doing some great things. You're in, in influence to a lot of people. So I want to turn that for a minute and say, who are three people that have been most influential to you? It could be personal, could be professional. Who's someone that the three people that have influenced you the most? Um, I could say my family, because uh, if I do, then I will take my three people already. So I'm going to just put my family because, because it's a lot of them. My family is more, is, is, is a good, um, it's one big bunch. Um, my next is my, 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 all my good friends that help me, that, that tweak me, that tell me like, Hey, go in this direction. And every time when I trust them, it's, it's the right landing when it come down to my career, because they see it, they were like, Hey, it's a need here. And every time when there's a need somewhere, I like to be there, let people know like, hey, you know, we heard your cries. We're here now. Let's, let's help. Let's, let's do better. So my friends. And another thing I think just, um, I could say this experience is like my motivator. Because you, because I look at people when they do stuff and I was like, I, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to do that. Like now you, you're really, I could, I could say you're one of my inspiration now because it's like, hey, could oh. I do a podcast? Should I do a podcast? Do I have time <laughs> for a podcast? Like, you know, it brings, because, <laughs> you, you know, because it brings awareness. Like, where, where anything we can bring awareness, and my, and my group will be parents with children, fathers with children, you know, that, that will be my audience. But is it, is it, a, is it a, would they listen? How could I bring them to my, you know, to my station? 
So stuff like that. So, you know, that's the question that's on my paper right now. Can I do a podcast? What do it take? How do I get people on? Is it going to be a waste of time? So I could say your inspiration because we're doing the same thing. We're bringing out food knowledge to, to, to a client and get people inspired to do great things with food. So yeah, those are my three people. So that'll be another goal adding to your list. Your yeah. list is always growing. Right? Yes, every year. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm trying to write down 300 goals now. My girlfriend challenged me to write down 300 goals. I'm like, come on, girl, are you serious? Like, go ahead, 300. But <laughs> as people, we always put the challenge, right? Yeah, that's right. Is there a question I haven't asked you yet that I should have? Or is there something that you want to share or tell someone that's uh, going into this career, going to go to culinary school? Is there anything along those lines? Oh, the only thing I could say is be open, be a sponge, always willing to share know what to share and know how to share and be kind and have fun. Like don't stress out, like have fun, make every class fun. Don't be the class clown, but just have fun because when you have fun, it's, it's less stress because you're not worrying, you know? So have fun. You're not like, Oh my God, I got to pass this. Like have fun, make, make your classes fun so you can enjoy the experience. Better than looking back 20 years later, like, oh, I should have did that. Oh, I should have did that. So have fun. You and have fun. Like make it fun. Make it enjoyable. If you can, if you can make money by selling your products long you in school, if that's going to make you have fun, then then do that. You know, so don't, you know, be serious, but at the same time, have fun because you don't want to miss nothing because it goes past so fast. Like the class is, is mm-hmm. 40 minutes, 40 minutes go past fast when you want to learn something and you know, you can't get, you can't get those 40 minutes back. So I, you know, I, I am a do believer of having fun. I really do. When I work and I'm a manager, I was like, Hey y'all, let's have some fun, but let's do a safe because it takes the time. It brings the time. And then you can just, at the end, you could breathe and be like, oh, I had a good day today. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you know how hard it is to get one of those. We had a good day today. We was, we, yep. we knocked it out the box y'all. Like it's, it's, that's, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Life's short. You got to enjoy it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to uh, tell everyone. Enjoy every moment because when you sit down, you can't go back. It's like a wedding cake. You got to do it one time or one time only. That's done. <laughs> So as we come to the end of our chat today, and before we wrap up, is there any last minute advice or guidance that you want to leave with the listeners? You know, something that you want to share? Yes. Okay. So I think for all my coronary arts people out here, y'all going to laugh about this. So always keep sunburn with you because you know, you're going to always burn yourself. Always keep band-aids because you know, you're going to cut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> always keep a smile on your face because you know, someone's going to get on your nerves before the night is out. So, and just have fun and be safe in the kitchen and learn all that you can learn and make sure, oh, one more thing, make sure you train your replacement because it's a joy to to, to sit there and to see what you learn and you can pour it into someone else. That's great. So, yes. Well, that is just about all the time we have for this episode. I want to first thank you, Keisha, for coming on the show today and sharing your culinary school story with all of us. Really appreciate your time, your insight, and your honesty. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I I can't wait to come back on the show. And this time we might have more than just me. We can have like a big melting pot of chefs having fun laughing at the food industry, how much fun we had inside the food industry as we retire. (laughs) Oh, a panel. That would be great. (laughs) Okay. Thanks again. I really enjoyed our chat. Bye now. All right. Bye-bye. And a big thanks and appreciation also goes out to all of you, the listeners. We hope you enjoy the show and this episode. You all are a big part of this show, so please let us know what you think. Your comments are always welcome, and they help us in making the best show possible. You can email them to culinaryschoolstories at gmail.com. That's culinaryschoolstories at gmail.com. Or even leave us a voicemail at area code 207 835 1275. That's area code 207 835 1275. And if you like the show, we have a big ask of all of you, and that is to share the podcast with everyone you know and to give us a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Okay, until our next culinary school story, take care and be well. Bye-bye.
Culinary School Stories is a proud member of the Food Media Network.